I did not hit her. It is not true. It is bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, YouTube. Today on Sean Bradley Reviews, I delve deep into the making of the greatest bad movie ever made in The Disaster Artist, directed by and starring James Franco. The film tells the true story of Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau, played by Dave and James Franco, two struggling actors who meet in an acting class in San Francisco. They become friends and move to Los Angeles to pursue careers in the entertainment industry. However, after months of failing to make it in Hollywood, their bad luck inspires Tommy to write The Room, a film that Tommy produces, directs and stars in with Greg playing his co-star. But during production, Tommy's eccentric directing methods and lack of self-will causes problems on the set, and through bad acting and poor direction, The Room goes on to garner a reputation as the Citizen Kane of bad movies. So I went into this film, now don't freak out, I went into this film without ever having seen The Room. Yes, I know, I know. I'm a little shocked as well. But I have seen enough of The Room from many reviews on YouTube, as well as the Nostalgia Critic's infamous 2010 review, which was temporarily pulled off of YouTube by Tommy Wiseau himself for breaching copyrights. In fact, let's analyze this scene. I mean, I know I'm nitpicking, but this whole 20 seconds really fascinates me. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. You didn't know it was him? You didn't recognize the five-foot, girly-haired French zombie until he took off his sunglasses? Here you go. That's me. Why did he say that? She didn't give him any reason to say that. Is that just his random catchphrase of the day? How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. And what was up with the rushed pace of that last couple seconds? Did they only have enough money to rent the store for like two minutes or they had to shoot it really fast? Hello, I would like to buy a dozen roses. Hey, jackass! I'm closing the store in 30 seconds! Here's the money. Keep the change. Hello, doggy. Bye. Doug Walker would later go on to make fun of Wiseau in a later sketch. Hello, John at TheRoomMovie.com. Can he use some of our copyrighted images? No! You can't use footage from The Room as breaking copyright! But it's not. It's a review, and... And where are you talking from? I'm at the office of Wiseau Films, and any footage you use to tell me Wiseau is hurting his good image! Not only have I watched many clips from The Room and internet reviews of the film, but I have also read the original memoir, The Disaster Artist, written by Greg Sestero and by journalist Tom Bissell. I recently bought myself a copy of this book so that I can reread it. Though I did not have any desire to watch The Room when I first heard of it, reading The Disaster Artist has encouraged my desire to see it. So, before I give a review of the film, let's go into James Franco's direction. Franco started out as an actor on a Pizza Hut advert before getting his break on the show Freaks and Geeks, which ran for only one season. His official film debut was in the teen comedy Never Been Kissed. After appearing in his first two films, Franco was cast by director Mark Rydell in a 2001 TV movie based on the life of James Dean, a role which won Franco 
also a Golden Globe. He received worldwide fame and attention from playing Harry Osborn in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, a role that he played until the third and final film in the trilogy in 2007. He collaborated with his Freaks and Geeks co-star, Seth Rogen, on 2008's Pineapple Express, and went on to earn an Oscar nomination as rock climber Aaron Ralston in Danny Boyle's 127 Hours. During the late 2000s, Franco had attended film school in New York. While being known more as an actor, Franco had directed a total of 16 films, three of which have yet to come out. So, prior to seeing The Disaster Artist, the only directorial effort that I saw of Franco's was his 2013 adaptation of William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying, which was unique in the way that Franco had edited the piece. James Franco's direction of this film is great. He gives a documentary feel to the film, although he nearly shoots all of the film in these handheld shots, apart from the opening scene where a group of celebrities such as Kristen Bell, Adam Scott and director J.J. Abrams talk about their experiences in watching The Room in these kind of talking head segments, as well as shot-by-shot -shot recreations of scenes from The Room which play alongside each other before the closing credits. This film is 1 hour and 43 minutes long and manages to show both sides of the story while the original novel is from Greg's point of view. There are many plot elements that are left out which detail Greg Sestero's early days as an actor, such as his time in Romania where he's making Retro Puppet Master, as well as a scene where Tommy and Greg go to see the talented Mr Ripley, which inspires the love triangle from that film between Johnny, Mark and Lisa. Not to mention that Tommy names the character of Mark after Matt Damon when he gets Mar Matt Damon's name wrong, calling him Mark Damon. So that would go on to inspire the character of Mark in the room. The screenplay is great mixing in a good balance between comedy and drama. Within the first few minutes, I was laughing already, and it was due to Tommy's antics. This film is not an overall comedy, it is a drama, and the film does try to treat it as that. Now on to the performances. James Franco is brilliant as Tommy Wiseau. D despite the prosthetics that he is fit with, he is still recognisable in his face. He has the accent down to a T. The character is portrayed firstly as a character that is passionate about acting and fearless in his pursuits. The first time that we're introduced to Tommy, he badly performs a monologue from A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams in his acting class. Tommy Wiseau had stated in interviews that he had intended for the film to be a dark comedy. However, he saw The Room first off as a Tennessee Williams style melodrama with all of these social issues and that intention shines through in the climax at the premiere when he sees how everyone has received his film. It is a great study into the effect that power has on a person. Tommy has spent his life being rejected for acting roles there's a scene where he runs into a film producer who is played in a cameo by comedy film producer Judd Apatow, and he badly performs lines from Hamlet while unknowingly becoming a nuisance. That 
is an example of a person who is down on his luck and is used to handling rejection. But when he begins production on The Room, Tommy, who is the director, is unwilling to compromise with the other cast members and the crew and he insists on scenes being shot his way. James Franco does a great job at portraying that sadness. As I had said earlier, James Franco had played James Dean in a TV biopic who just happens to be Tommy Wiseau's favourite actor. There's a scene where he and Greg go and visit the crash site from his 1955 death. And he was also inspired by this scene from Rebel Without a Cause... You're tearing me apart! ...to come up with this most quoted classic line. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! That is a line despite being a homage to another film, has taken on a life of its own, being instantaneously linked with The Room. James Franco had cast his younger brother, Dave Franco, in the role of Greg Sestero. Despite the fact that in facial structure, the two look nothing alike, I think Zac Efron would have been a more viable choice, Dave Franco manages to make you invested in the character and there are times when you think of him as James Franco's brother but as siblings they look a little alike but different. He makes you feel bad for the character when he is struggling in Hollywood and the Franco brothers have great chemistry together. Seth Rogen plays Sandy Sclair, who was the script supervisor for The Room. And doing some research for this review, there may have been some claims, including from his recent memoir, that Sclair had directed The Room, while Tommy had taken complete credit. While quickly thinking about it, I kind of see it. In the film, as Tommy is acting in the scenes, Sclair's job was to watch the monitor. There is a scene where they are shooting the famous rooftop scene with a personal favourite line from Johnny. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. That scene took 32 takes to get right, with Tommy constantly forgetting his lines, which, by the way, were from a screenplay that he had written himself. With Sclair getting bored and then agitated at Tommy's unprofessionalism. The character of Sandy Sclair kind of becomes the criticism for the audience. There are bits where they are filming scenes and he would point out the contrivances in the plot and in the motivation of the characters. The film also has an ensemble cast of characters and features cameos from Brian Cranston as himself back in his Malcolm in the Middle days, Zac Efron as Dan Janjigian, who was the actor who played Chris R in The Room, Josh Hutchison as Philip Haldeman, who was the actor who played Denny, and Ari Graynor as Juliet Danielle, who was the actress who played Lisa. Tommy Wiseau has a cameo at the very end of the credits, opposite his big screen counterpart, while the real Greg Sestero had a cameo as a casting director, which was deleted from the final film. These actors have a range from either cameos to minor roles in the film, and they do well with their screen time. Josh Hutchison and Ari Graynor 
are good in their performances, especially with Ari Graynor as Juliet Danielle, who definitely feels the brunt of Tommy's self idolization The room has gone on to gain cult status across the globe. However, it appears to be only available through the film's official website and Wiseau's own website, Street Fashions USA, as well as several online marketplaces. It has become a favourite on the midnight circuit, with monthly screenings in many cinemas across the globe. For any UK fans, it screens at the Prince Charles Cinema every month, where fans participate by coming in costume, playing catch in the auditorium, as well as throw spoons at the screen. The Disaster Artist was nominated for two Golden Globes, including Best Motion Picture in a Musical or Comedy, but won for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy for James Franco, who went up on stage to accept the award with his brother Dave, as well as inviting the real Tommy Wiseau up with him. Whilst it was snubbed at the BAFTAs, it was nominated at the 90th Academy Awards for Best Adapted Screenplay, while James Franco got snubbed for Best Actor, probably because of this. The film also has been certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, with a 91% on the tomato meter and with an average rating of 7.7 out of 10. In conclusion, The Disaster Artist is an excellent take on the making of The Room, the greatest bad movie ever made. It succeeds in bringing chuckles while also giving it a lot of heart. James Franco did a great job of directing this film and his performance as Tommy Wiseau is just spot on. His brother Dave is also great in the role of Greg Sestero. Any cinephile will definitely enjoy this, regardless of whether or not they have seen The Room. I give this film an 8 out of 10. This is Sean Bradley, signing out. Please like, comment and subscribe to my channel, or you could do what Mark says and leave your stupid comments in your pocket. I'll see you later. Or bye, YouTube.